Psalms, chapter 96. O sing unto the Lord a new song. A new song. Now, not going against the hymnal, but what about singing a hymn, a song from your own heart? I do it most of the time. I will find on YouTube instrumental hymns or classical instrumental hymns, and I'll add my own words. Never been recorded. I bet you God records it. And you realize that some of the songs or hymns that we sing and you do, which we didn't do today because of busy schedule, probably tomorrow, the biblical truth of our hymns, you realize they were personal poems? That many of those hymns do not fit other Christians and surely does not fit worldly Christians or unsaved. How about just once writing a song, you don't write down, you don't put down on paper, nobody gives the glorification but you and God. Sing unto the Lord. You won't find that in it too many AM and FM dials. All the earth. Now why all the earth? Well, I hear birds sing and they sing beautifully. There are other animals that communicate with great sounds. Scientists don't know nothing. What if they're communicating to God? Sing unto the Lord. Uh, I guess we get the point what he wants us to say. Bless his name. And again, when we're doing the biblical truth of our hymns, and we're up to, I don't know how many hymns now. Have you ever looked at the hymnal? And looked at the popular hymns that are sung? In your traditional old-fashioned Baptist church. I ain't talking about contemporary. I'm talking about old-fashioned in the hymnal. And have you realized how many times the name Jesus is not there? Take amazing grace. No Jesus. That's why it's the worldly popular hymn. Why is that? When Acts 4, 12 say, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I mean, the gospel's there, some of them. I know what some of them are singing about. But what if you got somebody who never heard the Bible, never heard the gospel, never heard? And they hear a hymn traditionally of a Baptist church. Will they, what would be the ratio of the opportunity of that person from your typical hymnal to hear the name Jesus being praised? Slight. Show forth his salvation. They shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus means salvation, Jehovah saved. There is no other salvation of God but Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. From day to day, every day. You start off your day to the Lord. Say, Lord, even if you're on your way walking to the bathroom. Say, Lord, what can I do today to please you? Lord, I, I, you know, I'm not planning on going anywhere. Or I'm planning on going to the store. Or I got to go to work or get the oil. So what can I do for you today, Lord, that will please you? Lord, thank you for a good night's sleep. And thank you I'm able to get out of bed. Day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. Now, this is written to, to Jewish Israelites who hate the heathen. 
You don't believe me? Go ask Jonah. Ask Peter. There was a prejudice. Ask the Jews in the time of the Samaritans. And even the Samaritans had a kind of a prejudice. You know, we don't talk to them and they don't talk to us. Kind of a little pride there. His wonders among all people. Where to give testimony to God, not the government. You say, what do you mean? I, I was in one church and it, it was good. I, I forget if we did it weekly or, or once or something like that. It would be a time to pass it. Anybody got a testimony to the Lord? And our church does it now. And somebody raised their hand and pray, yeah, I want to praise the Lord, you know, something this week or and I have been in church services where they'll raise their hand, you know, I, I, I got my check from the, you know, it came from the government. It was just in time to pay, you know. The government is not God and God is not the government. Giving God the praise and glory. Something that only God can do. Verse 3 is missions work. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. Okay, that's how I'm saved. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not really preaching when I go to the farmer's market, though I preach the gospel. I am testifying to the people that God saved me, Jesus Christ saved my soul, and all I'm doing is proclaiming my, my big mouth that I love God, I am not ashamed of this gospel, and you can be saved too. You can be just as excited as I am. Let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you what God did. But how great the ball game went. How great that movie was. How great our Republican is. How great our Democrat is. How great our pastor is. I've been in churches like that. God is as far away, like, oh, I'm outside the back door, knocking. The Lord is great. In all practice and purpose. He's great and wonderful he is. He's great in the power and ship that he is. He's great that he's almighty God. And since he's great, greatly to be praised. Take a week. You're at your job, you're sitting there. Just write down what people are happy or thankful about, what, what blesses them, what happened throughout that whole week. Just jot it down on a piece of paper. And then come the end of the week, Saturday, you're not doing nothing. Just write, look at that paper and see what they praise. See if it's God or a ball team or whoever, whatever, that's not God. And if it's a Christian, not greatly praising the Lord, you got trouble. You got a problem. If the name of name of Jesus is not on your lips, you don't praise the Lord when you don't read the Bible. God says, study. He, God, is to be feared above all gods. I fear coronavirus. Coronavirus is a god. It's getting its prophets, the media, and and the politicians, and people out there, you know, prophesying. Put that face mask on. Use your hand sanitizer. Don't go out. Don't go out. The bathroom's on the right with no toilet paper. Coronavirus today is a God, and people fear more of coronavirus than they do God. You guys be this six feet apart. You can't go there. You can't do that. Wait out your car. We'll have it delivered to you. That ain't going to bring you wisdom. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And Satan and the devil and Lucifer are going to find out, he's going to find out what makes the world afraid. And if your fear is off God, then he's happy. 
Many Christians are afraid. I don't want to go to church because of coronavirus. And I'm a strong Christian. Do you fear coronavirus? Well, yeah, I don't. Well, nobody wants to get sick. What is it that you fear? Reverencing and honoring God through service and with the Christians, or you can't serve two masters. And if you won't go serve the Lord because of coronavirus, I guess who I know who your God is. Well, you know, our church has it on, on, on live. We have it. And then what if the internet gets shut down? That could be the next step. The church doors are closed. What if the devil says, okay, now shut down the internet? It's a possibility. If it happens, you heard first heard it here. For all the gods of the nation are idols. I think there's been a couple of television programs where they actually call themselves the idol. And I think it was on Wednesday nights. And I would hear many Christians say, well, I'm not going to church tomorrow because the semifinals of the idol program. And if you have a sports program, they have an idol with a big thing that at the end of the year, they aim for that big gold, silver, whatever that piece of garbage is. At the end of the year, you got that idol that's shaped like a triangle that Jeremiah chapter 10 says you bow down before it. Oh, we don't bow down before it. You water your, you put water in it, don't you? Don't you bow down and pull the gifts out under it? You bow down to it. It's a God. You take care of it. You clean it. You dress it all up. You must bore it from the from the place you bought it. And you must bore it out to, to the front so the garbage man can take it. It's a it's a God. It's a pretty God. And you hide it. But the Lord made the heaven. Easter Bunny didn't make the heaven. Santa Claus didn't make the heaven. God, the Lord God, made the heaven. Not evolution. Honor and majesty, we talked about majesty the other night, are before him. Are they? How many husbands and fathers during this coronavirus has actually taken up, stood up, and blessed their family by having family Bible time, family prayer time, and family Bibles time? How many? How many men of households have taken up the slack? Now their church doors are closed. All right, everybody, put YouTube on. You know what kind of message you can get on YouTube? You know what kind of gas you can find? You know what kind of idolatry? You know what I mean? Those people you, that you can listen to are women to follow in the scripture. You know what I mean? Those YouTube videos or, or Facebook will pick up a non-King James Bible. I like the one year, many years ago. I think I, I've just gotten out of football. I've, I've given my life totally to the Lord. I used to be a fa fanatic for football. I think it was a year after I left football. It was so funny. And all the, all the, the churches, they get, uh, you know, the, the big screens. They fight everybody. We're going to have a football party Sunday night. And I was one year. I forget who it was, but uh, it was a celebrity got up there, and they're doing their their – their dance moves, they're doing their magic and their illegal, sinful things. And up on the stage, her boob popped out. Right there, Super Bowl, the boob of the woman pops out. Boom. And you know what I was amazed? How many churches got upset because they saw a boob on TV? You know what my question was about three days when I started... Three or four days, I started hearing the church is upset. The church is upset. Oh, the TV loud. The, what were you doing watching the boob tube to find a booby? If you would have had services and singing of hands and prayers like you were supposed to on a Sunday night, you would have never seen the boob on the boob tube. 
You know how quick it is for people of your church service to be on their computer thing and say, oh, oh, that message is boring. Let's find something better to do. Or let's put that video game on. They're playing video games in the, they were playing the games in the church service. I've seen the kids doing it with their phones and tablets and all that, playing video games during the church service. And I can imagine if your church service is by chance boring, that one will just be quickly switched to something else. You know what they have the honor of doing now that you're home with a tablet or computer? If I don't like that message, I can pop it off. Think about it, preacher. Think about what they can be doing when you're not watching them. I mean, God's not, they don't believe God's watching. They don't believe the eyes of the Lord in every place be owned to evil and the good. Think about all the times that you're, and now listen, I'm talking about good preachers too. I'm talking about, you know, you work on that sermon and I mean, even you know, and I've done it. The message is bombed. Or you got a great message and all the people don't think so. And they could just walk out on your service, but they're not going to because they don't want to be offensive. They don't want to be, oh, look what them. But they can do it now on YouTube or Facebook or whatever is used by their church. Now they can just turn you off. You think they're going to be willing to want to go back to church and sit there and, and the chance of getting for them a boring sermon that I think a lot of worldly Christians won't return. Honor and majesty are before him. When you give God your attention. Yeah, listen, I, I've sat under message. And you know those messages are not for me. I keep my ear. And I'll be reading through the Bible. Looking at my notes. Looking for people's names I'm praying for. And you know, I'm highlighting or marking my Bible. I'm listening, but you know. God still get the attention. And a strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. That would be the temple. You realize the beauty of that temple, that gold and silver, that when the sun would come up over the plains and mountains of Jerusalem and just reflect off that, that beauty of the temple of Solomon. Strength. What, what's greater strength? Is God's there. Don't you dare come attack my people. And you've read all the things that God got in the victory. Jawbone of an ass, an ox gold, hail coming from the, one time he's bopping the, the head of, of the enemy off there with, with hail. And one angel comes and destroys a whole entire army. And one time they're out in the thing and they dig these ditches and they're like, hey, our, the people of Israel are killing themselves. They get in the battle and they start fighting themselves. That's strength. Many a times Israel as an army stood there and did nothing. While God did the battle. The other day someone said about, about Jericho. Oh, they were screaming. No, they, no, the Bible says they, 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 they lifted up their voice. Probably gave God the, the, the credit. Probably gave God a hooray. Probably gave God a hallelujah. Shout! What? Jesus? Well, they couldn't shout. Jesus, God, Jehovah. Give unto the Lord. Uh oh, that's a bad word. That's a four letter word. And all right, people already think money. It's not talking about money. Give. What do you give him? Give unto the Lord, all ye kindred of people. Israelites, Moab. Amen. Babylonians, Egyptians, Canaanites, all the people. Doesn't just say hundreds of people. That's not just Israelites. The Queen of Sheba came and brought all kinds of things for Solomon to hear the wisdom of God. Name and come with, with, with gifts for because of his, his leprosy. The Bible says they came to Solomon to hear God's wisdom. Let 
Give unto the Lord glory and strength. That's not money. Give God the glory and great things he has done. Give God the strength. I am weak, but God is strong. I am unable, but God is able. Give. I guess this chapter is hated by people. Give unto the Lord. Boy, we kept saying, sing, sing, sing. Now give, give, give. Give unto the Lord the glory to his name. That doesn't give the glory of the name to actors, athletes, actresses, any other person but God. Give God the glory. Not your pastor. Not your church name. God. Many church goings and church activities don't give God the glory. It gives their own church the glory. Bring an offering. Oh, there's an offering. There's the money. That wasn't always so. An offering for the Old Testament was an ox, was sheep. You mean you want to say, oh, give, give it time to time. There's no law. Yes, it is law. And you want to give tithes? The, the Bible says tithes of sheep. <laughs> All right. If a person has dogs and their and their female dog gives, gives a litter of puppies, they have 10 puppies. You give that one puppy to the, to the pastor. Well, why don't want us to, oh, yeah. Oh, you want the tithes of money, but you don't want the tithes of puppies or kittens or zucchini. You go read, read the Old Testament. The tithes was not just money. It was products. It was animals. Everything was a tenth. The shepherds had a stick and they would put the animals, sheep, whatever they had, in this little, little alleyway where only one animal could go through. And it would count. One, two, three. Tenth animal, you pull it out. One, two. Tenth animal, you pull it out. That's the offering of the Old Testament. And come into his courts. That's the temple. The courts were the temple. What were in those courts? I have brain to give. That go over there in that area. I have sheep to give. That goes over there. I have gold to give. That goes over here. I have silver. That goes over here. I've got tomatoes again. That goes over there. Each of those courts held a specific thing. That's Old Testament. Oh, worship. Oh, boy. You know, if you see a sign on the church today, worship service, you stay far away from it. Yeah, it's going to be jungle music, and I can't say that. I did. The worship of jungle music of jungle gods brought to a jungle America. Oonga boonga Anything but the worship of God. You got to watch out for that name of worship in the churches today. That worship in churches today, it means stay away. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. You realize what that what Revelation says? You know, we got the rainbow. That's not a rainbow. It's called a bow. Go read Genesis again. It does not say rainbow. But you know where it does say rainbow? Uh, Revelation chapter 4, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, see? It's an emerald. Let's go. Revelation chapter 4. Because I have a feeling you're not going to check the scripture. I think it's Revelation 4. The only thing I would have wrong is the chapter. I don't think, you, I don't think you're going to read the scriptures. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. Immediately I was in spirit. And behold, the throne set in heaven. There we are, we're in heaven. Verse 3. And he that sat it was to look upon its jasper and sardine stone. 
That's red, yellow, brown, and red. And there was a rainbow. There it is. R-A-I-N-B-O-W. That's not the bow that's in Noah's time. In time of Noah, was B-O-W. A rainbow. There it is. Round about the throne. In sight like an emerald. A green. Well, the Sodomites have taken the rainbow. They didn't. They don't have a green rainbow. The Irish stole it. Revelation 4 says there's a rainbow and it's green. It's not red, orange. The Sodomites do not have the bow in the sky of Noah and they don't have the rainbow of Revelation chapter 4. You just haven't read your... But let's go. What is that? What is that? Genesis... I can never go. 9, 10. I'll show you because you're not going to go check it out. You're... you're, you're you're too busy. Revelate uh, Genesis chapter 9, verse number 16. 16. Look at that. And the bow, don't say rainbow, the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, and I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every creature and all flesh that's upon the earth. It's somewhere else, too. Verse 13 I do set my bow in the cloud. It is not rainbow. There are modern Bibles that say rainbow. Are you a modern Bible King James believer? Then stop saying rainbow. That's a modern Bible. I've checked it out. Kick. I'm the kicking preacher. The beauty of his holiness. Can you imagine the, those colors? Red, brown. All the colors of the walls are, are, that are garnished New Jerusalem. You want to talk about a spectrum. We're going to need a brand new eyes and brand new body to see God. Fear before him. All the earth. Yeah, right. You think America fears God? They fear coronavirus. God that made the coronavirus. There's no fear. Say among the heathen. That the Lord reigneth. That's millennium. There's a the millennium. Present tense. The world also shall establish that it shall not be moved. Europe and all that will be moved. Burnt up. Fervent heat. He, God, shall judge the people righteously. Second Advent. Let the heavens, plural, rejoice. And let the earth be glad. Second Advent. Millennium. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful. Because they're bringing forth all the fruits without the curse. And all that they're in, animals, the fields, the people, the ground, the uncursed, no more curse. Then shall all the that are there, so all the that, so, so, oh boy, there shall all the, yes, let me try this again. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. That's an interesting thing that it says about the millennium. There are other passages in the scripture that say the trees are going to clap their hands. You know what? Count me as a fool, but I'm going to count that literal. because it, it says it too many times. I mean, I watched as a boy every year with my mom. I watched The Wizard of Oz. That's one of the movies around every year. And every time they're walking on the yellow brick road, they're heading to Emerald City, the, the Emerald Rainbow. They would come across this field and they were hungry. And there were apple trees. And they said they got the apple trees all upset. You know, they pick their own apples, they throw them at them. 
And there's been horror movies where, you know, the trees reach out and grab you. Somebody also believes the Bible, the trees are going to come to life. If they don't, then I'm wrong. Before the Lord Jesus Christ, millennial, he cometh, oh, that's the second Advent passage. You want to tell that to Jehovah Witnesses or are we done with them? Have we buried them yet? I mean, we're up to Psalm 96. How many times have we buried the Jehovah Witnesses? Before the Lord, he cometh. For he cometh to judge the earth. Is that not a second Advent passage? Who is that? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jesus, who is God. And I guarantee you, I haven't checked. Probably the New World Translation has probably changed that, or they have taught their people to say it's something else. He shall judge the world with righteousness, second advent, and the people with his truth. There it is. How great and magically that God ought to be praised by all people, and he's not. How great and wonderful and beauty that God should be praised by all Christians, and he's not. And then the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he will be praised for a thousand years. And Satan will come up, and God will wipe them out. 